Major Slack videos. Hey, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back and welcome to part two of my No Horse, No Health Flask challenge run in Elden Ring. This is my girl Melee Made Easy. And uh, part two is called Close to the Edge, and you'll see why near the end of the video. Uh, first thing we're going to do is tackle Fire Grease Camp. Some of these locations here, um, they don't actually have a name, so I'm giving them names according to what you find um, in these particular locations. And I just bought like five arrows. You only need one if you're following this walkthrough, but I bought five just to be sure. And yeah, so back to um, Agil Lake North. And this is a little run uh, I do to get a quick smoldering butterfly. I did this in part one. This is an easy run. As soon as you land, as soon as you touch down in Agil Lake North, you're facing the exact direction of gay front ruins. Just run quickly in and grab a smoldering butterfly and the camp boss is always patrolling away if you take off right away after landing, like touching down. So you can just quickly grab a smoldering butterfly and um, run back and it's no big deal. Now, I'm gonna show you another way to take down mounted Caden cell swords with the halberd. Yep, the halberd can do more. You know that like double sweep when you hold it in two hands? So you can use that double sweeping attack, the charge attack, to take down Mountain Caden Cell Swords. And this time you're going to target the horse. You're going to get right up on the right side, do a charge attack that does a double swing, and then just two, do two strong attacks immediately following. And then when he's down on the ground, charge forth. Okay, so once again, that's charge attack to do the double swing, then two strong attacks right, right away, right afterwards. Don't wait. And then that'll knock him off his horse, lock on, do a charge forward to finish him off. And here, this is a very, very rare situation where this mounted Caden Cell Sword that patrols in front of Fire Grease Camp, his patrol route actually interconnected with the Galloping Horseman. That never happens because that right at the point where I wanted to take him down, see that guy patrolling on the right side of the screen? So we're going to have to go with plan B. Here is Fire Grease Camp. I call it Fire Grease Camp because there's a cookbook in there. Go forward a little bit slack. boy. Yeah, there's a cookbook in there right there. You see the little glinty thing beside the horse? Yeah. That is Armorer's Cookbook 1, I believe, which will allow you to make fire grease. And we want that. We desperately need that for something that's coming up. So here is plan B to take down this, this patrolling mounted Caden Seltzer. We've got to take him out. Otherwise, this camp is going to be a lot harder to take down. We don't want them on the scene. So same thing, get up behind him. Try to get up on his right side. Target the horse. Get up on the right side a little bit and charge attack. Strong, strong, charge for it. Charge attack. Strong, strong, knocks him off his horse. Lock on, charge for it. And sometimes you'll um, break his stance and you can just do a critical hit. That time he survived, I was really surprised. I had to do a jump strong to finish him off. All right, so having done that, um, now there's just three Caden Cell Swords left in the camp. First thing you want to do though is take care of this pack of wolves in the back because Caden Cell Swords, their weakness is open field. They're really susceptible to the charge fourth skill on the halberd, but. If they can get you cornered or backed up against an obstacle, that's their strong point. So you want this whole field here clear. So if you get in trouble, you can always go into the field and back up and fight them like that. See, and there's this pack of wolves circling around this field constantly. And I think the best thing to do is just stick your own wolves on them. Throw a dagger at them and then just get them all mixing it up. It's a lot of fun. And you can help them out by doing some guard counters on some of these guys that target you. Help out your wolves to help them stay alive, stay nice and healthy, but keep yourself nice and healthy as well. Don't take too many risks. And you can just sit back and watch the fun. Throw some daggers. Now, there's a certain zone here where your spirit ashes are allowed to spawn and it's toward the north there. Don't go too far northeast. 
See that big rock there? Don't go too far towards that because you'll go out of the zone. Now, Spear Dashes can actually operate outside their zone as long as you stay within the zone. So that's something to, you know, be aware of. And we just have the Alpha Wolf left, the White Wolf there. He's like extra tough. And he did in my my last, my Lone Wolf. And he's really susceptible to Charge Force, so let's do that on him. Knock him down, we can do the Charge Force stun lock. And again. Once again, Halberd rocks. Charge for it. Okay, so we got the enemy group refill, so that means that all the wolves are dead. And this field is clear, so this is great. So if we get in trouble in the camp with the Cadence Cell Sword, we can just go out into the field, into the open field, and like I said, that is the Cadence Cell Sword's weakness. Lots of open field. And down this way to the southeast are four tarnished golden sunflower. You want these. These are gonna be, you can use these to make holy water pots. They're kinda like a Econo version of fire pots. They don't scale with strength, they scale with faith, but there's they still do pretty good damage. And tarnished gold and sunflower are a lot more abundant than um smoldering butterfly. Like I said, it's kinda like an Econo fire pot. Okay, so we're gonna go up on top of these runes here, and this will give us a view of the camp and we're gonna start taking down these Caden Cell Swords. And you wanna load up a couple fire pots. And before you get underway, I want everybody to practice this jump here. Up here onto this little ramp here, okay? Practice it a couple times. Because you're gonna be under pressure to do this jump just right. Okay? Got that jump practiced, okay, sneak up here. And this Caden Cell Sword right here, target him, throw a fire pot, and then go do your jump. Jump up here and then run all the way to the top. As quick as you can, get to the top, turn around, and target him as he comes around. He always does one of two things. He'll hop up on the between the gap there in the runes, or he'll come closer. If he comes closer on the ground, just throw a fire pot at him and finish him off. Easy peasy. That's one Caden Cell Sword down. The other one is sleeping by the campfire, and the third one is at the entrance. Here are a couple of wolves. You can do them in with either Kukri or Daggers. Kukri just like will one-shot them. you got to watch out for this... This guy right here, because sometimes he gets alerted when you kill these wolves, okay? So, be ready. So here I was using a couple daggers and just back off. Make sure he doesn't get alerted. And this one always gets stuck up, stuck up against the cooking pot, so you can do him in with a couple of cooking, or rather, a couple of daggers. And that's all the wolves done inside the camps. So now, we can go inside the camp. As long as you keep fairly quiet, that guy sleeping there is not going to notice you at all. And you can go grab the cookbook. Boom, there we go. Armor's cookbook one. Now we can make fire grease and you grab some smoldering butterfly and we can make fire grease, which will make it easier to take down this guy. Okay, we're gonna make some fire grease. Make that with root resin and smoldering butterfly. Lasts for one minute and gives you 85 extra fire damage on your weapon. Okay, so we're gonna grease it up. We're gonna backstab him to a charge attack which is like the double sweep and then jump strong to finish him off okay backstab lock on charge attack double sweep jump strong and you don't have to jump forward just jump in place and you'll finish him off works every time now this guy here he's got a couple of wolves out there in front in front so if you take him on now um it's going to be a total clusterfuck. So you got to take out the wolves. And I've been saving my Kukri so I can one-shot these guys. So throw your Kukri at the wolf. One-shot him. He gets a little alerted. Then goes back to his regular routine. One-shot this wolf. Go back. Hide hide behind the, like, the hedgehog here. He gets alerted. Goes back to his regular routine. And everything's good. Now, the problem here is that cooking pot. You see it like it's on the tripod there it kind of blocks your way to get behind him to do a critical hit and it pushes you too close to him so what you're going to do is you're going to destroy it using your short bow that's why I had you buy an arrow so shoot an arrow at that destroy it he gets alerted turns around but as long as you stick in the bushes here he won't notice and now we can get a good position behind him to do a critical hit and it's the exact same thing critical hit like backstab critical hit Charge attack, which is like the double sweep, and jump strong to finish him off. Make sure that galloping horseman is not in the vicinity, otherwise he'll notice. 
Okay, so here we go. Critical hit. Charge attack. Jump strong. Works every time. Okay. Done and done. And we got the enemy group refill. So this camp is clear. And there's a victory slam by Melee Made Easy. And done and done. Now, we would like to farm some flight pinions, which will make better arrows. We can make arrows with simply uh, the Smoldering Butterfly and um, Thin Beast Bones. But if you add in flight pinion, you make um, fletched arrows, which go a lot further. And these birds here will give up flight pinions. If you target that bird right there, okay, throw a fire pot on them, typically you can get all three. I got really unlucky here and did, did not get a single flight pinion. So we're going to have to do it again. Fortunately, there's a side of grace right down here. So, game wasted a fire pot on me. And I'm checking to see... Checking my inventory. Discover the side of grace. And we're done with fire grease camp so you can rest. And we've got one fire pot left. And you want to level up strength to 20. I believe I'm going to do that momentarily. First, I want to go take another crack at taking down these birds here. Target the furthest one on the left and get right about here and check a fire pot. And you should do them all in. There we go. And this time, got three flight pinions, so the game made up for And a four toed foul foot. Speaking of cooking, a lot of hard work goes into cooking up the strategies for this walkthrough, so I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot, I really appreciate it. Alright, um, back to Algeo Lake North. I'm going to make a quick smoldering butterfly run. I wasn't aware that I actually... I do actually have a pretty good stock of smoldering butterflies now. I'm just assuming that I didn't. So I just going to want to go grab one to make sure I have enough to make another fire grease because that's important for what we're about to do next. And here we're going to level strength up to 20. From 18 to 20. This is important. The Great Axe requires strength of 30. Oh yeah, first of all I want to make a batch of fletched firebone arrows. Fletched firebone arrows. Make a batch of 10. That's important too. Using the flight pinions that we just got. And now we're going to level up strength to 20. Okay, this is important because the Great Axe requires strength 30, but if you two-hand a weapon, you increase your strength by 50%. So all we have to do is get strength to 20, and then increase by 50%, that will give the required strength 30 to handle the two act, the uh, Great Axe without taking a damage penalty. And here, um, even though I rested, the camp didn't reset because I went into the level up screen, which is something that happens in Elden Ring if you rest and then go into another screen instead of just exiting right out of the rest. Um, what happens is the camp will respawn, but it responds at the moment you rest, if you know what I mean. So you rest, the camp responds, but you're, you're still in the menu, right? If you start doing other stuff in the menu, the camp is now in motion, and all enemies are now in motion, if you will. Let's see, so that's what happened there. So I had to wait until the camp boss went back, and then I went and got another smoldering butterfly. Now, we're going to make our way down eventually to get the Gravitus Ash of War, which is going to be immensely useful when we start taking on the catacombs and any other area where um, enemies are hiding around the corner waiting to ambush you, which is one of Elden Ring's favorite tricks. Um, there is a camp here, which I like to call smoldering... I just call it butterfly camp. We want to take on this camp. It's off to the left there. But we want to wait until that caravan following the carriage, the troll carriage, has gone a considerable distance away because we have no more need for that. So what I'm going to do is going to go over to this wolf graveyard here. Here you can whack this mage here. This mage always has a glintstone staff. It's a guaranteed drop. So if you're looking for a glintstone staff, that guy right there always has one. We can't use it because we can't use any sorceries or incantations. 
but we're here for that golden rune graveyard on the right side of the screen there. We just have to take down all these wolves here. There's like four or five wolves and an alpha wolf. The alpha wolf is the big white one. So I'm just kind of like harassing these guys, getting to rush me so I can do a guard counter to finish them off. And as usual, we're going to switch to the halberd and do um, charge force stunlock on the alpha wolf. Works every time. Yeah, charge force stunlock. Halberd kicks ass. Okay, so now I got more Thin Beast Bones, so I can make another batch of... Um, I can only make one batch of Firebone Arrows. I wanted to make two to have 20. And there are five Golden Roots collected in this graveyard. That's two. That's three. That's four. And that's five. Done and done. So, at this point, um, the Troll Carriage should have moved a considerable distance away. So now we can take on Butterfly Camp. So back down to the west, and we're going to have to drop down this cliff. Just point yourself towards waypoint ruins. There's the carriage way down the road, so wiping out all those guys just, you know, just yields you a bunch of chump change, and you're going to have to deal with another Caden sellsword, mounted Caden sellsword. It's not worth it, so just let them pass. We already got the great axe. Okay, so there's the guy, Caden sellsword, patrolling here. Make sure he's away. And you can throw a dagger to harass that guy, get him to rush you, finish him off with a charge forth. And this guy with a torch, you can finish him off typically with a couple daggers. Wait till he stops moving though. And I switch to my great axe. One, two, down he goes. Now, these Caden cell swords, as you know, are tough hombres. Really tough hombres. But you can take him down easily with the great axe. It's got the the barbaric roar skill and this turns your strong attacks into a three hit combo so get up behind him critical hit and then slam on that strong attack button you get the three attack three hit combo it's actually a four hit combo if you hit the strong attack button once you get a three hit combo and then if you tap it again anytime during that combo you get the fourth mega slam hit and that's the best way to take down those Caden Cell Swords. Make sure you charge up the Barbaric Roar before you go backstab him. Because if you try to, you know, do that while well, you're, you know, you'll alert him. And here are four smoldering butterflies. That's why I call this Butterfly Camp. Okay, they're always there. It's a guaranteed drop. Not a drop, but a rather a guaranteed stash. A unique stash. It does not respawn. And now we're going to go down to Agil Lake South. And the beacon is at the wrong place, Slack. Slack, hold up here. Hold up. See the beacon? Got the wrong place. Move down a bit. Right about there. Yeah, boy. Okay. Get rid of the other one. There we go. Okay. There is a site of grace down there, Agil Lake South. We're going to go down and discover it. It's going to be a jumping off point to where we're going next, which is the West Cliff. And down there on the beach is the Gravitus Ash of War. But we're going to have to take down the Lesser Alabaster Lord. A really, really super tough hombre. So first we're going to discover uh, Agil Lake South. And we can rest, powder our nose, grab a couple of mushrooms. There's another one just like off the little ledge there but I didn't bother getting it and there's a golden rune tree here guided by a couple of dagger soldiers and a crossbow guy you can just use charge forth on them because none of them have shields down it goes Golden rune, strike that golden rune too. That's worth 400 runes. And we're going to push to the northwest. 
this little camp down here which has a sliver of meat. <laughs> wow, a sliver of meat. Yeah, a sliver of meat. And then over under these runes is Yuri, if I recall correctly. And there's a smoldering butterfly at his camp, and he has a quest. We just uh, talked to him, jam through his dialogue. That'll kick off his quest line. Ah, you must be the new tarnished. You do well to steer clear of a gill like fledgling. A dragon roosts there, and it's as fearsome as it is majestic. So, unless you're mad. I wish to be burned alive. Stay clear of the light. All right, thanks for your advice, there, buddy. Okay, and we're pushing to the west here. There's a side of grace here, kind of hidden. Seaside ruins, right here. I want to discover this. Now we want to get down to the beach, and those of you who know the game may think it's impossible, but it's not. I found a way to get down to the beach on foot. Typically you would use the spirit spring. There's a spirit spring right here. But uh, of course that only works if you're on a horse. Or not on a horse. Spirit spring is just off to the right there. I don't know if Gamer Sack is going to show it, but yeah, it's right there. You can use the horse to get down. But I found a way to get down anyways. You will take damage, but it's doable. So just follow my route here. And you gotta find this little ledge here, and then you can drop all the way down there. That's not gonna do damage. It's, and then turn here, get on this rocky ledge here, stick to the right side, drop down to this ledge, and then this jump is gonna give you damage, take damage. But you can survive. You can always survive. If you had soft cotton, you could take that. You could take that jump with no damage at all. Okay, so now get some fire grease ready. You need this. This is going to give you an edge to take down this guy. Basically, you're going to use charge fourth stun lock. You can't backstab him, okay? It's impossible to backstab him. The game won't let you. So you got to get up close. Get in sneak mode. When you get close enough, charge fourth. Then charge fourth again right away. Then charge fourth the third time. Charge fourth again. Charge fourth the third time. Push forward a, a bit, jump strong, and this will break his stance and then do a critical hit. This is the only time you can do a critical hit on this guy. You have to break his stance. Okay, so once again, let's charge forward three times, move forward a little bit, jump strong to break his stance, then go up and do a critical hit to finish him off. And you need fire grease to do it. If you don't have fire grease, you're going to have to jump strong twice to break his stance. So that's why the fire grease is essential. And slap on your torch. And we're going to go in here and grab the Halleck Drake Talisman. This will give you some holy damage protection. Alright, and you just saw me pick up the Ash of War Gravitas. A fantastic Ash of War. Area of effect um, attack that you can use to get enemies around corners and all kinds of other things. You use it to farm flight pinions, use it to farm thin beast bones, it's a fantastic Ash of War. I'm going to be putting that to use a lot. Alright, I want everybody to buy the Missionary's Cookbook number one. Missionary's Cookbook number one. This will allow you to make holy water pots. So now you can make an Econo, Econo Fire Pot. Not quite as powerful as the Fire Pot, but like I said, tarnished golden sunflowers are a lot more abundant. This tiny golden aura is the grace of the Erd Tree. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Also, I hear you can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale, is a shard bearer, a demigod, who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. 
If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. Done and done. And I believe I leveled up strength there. Yeah, level up strength. I'm going so fast I can barely keep up with myself. <laughs> okay, made some more fire pots and we are going to Groveside Cave. Oh yeah, that's right. You may have wondered why we didn't kill the wolves in Groveside Cave when we first went in and whacked um, the Groveside Cave boss because it's a lot easier to kill all the wolves and get the cracked pot there, the free cracked pot, if you have a couple of fire pots. Because there's an alpha wolf in there and he's a, he's really tough. And there's three or there's like four other wolves and it's like a tight space. And trying to fight them all plus the alpha wolf with just guard counter, it's it's a really tough fight. So the best thing to do is take out the alpha wolf with a couple of fire pots. Just get up here on the ledge here. There he is down there. Target him, two fire pots, instant kill. One to make sure you're backed away from the ledge so that you don't go over because when you throw a fire pot you tend to move forward a little bit and I just threw a couple of daggers to finish out that guy there's the fire or the cracked pot and everybody else we could just use the torch to kill him guard counter with a torch the torch is a kick-ass weapon by the way it does strike damage And it's a great weapon to use in dark areas. Okay, so that first wolf there, I just took him down with a strong attack. Second wolf, I used guard counter. Grab all these silver fireflies. And I believe this golden rune there. And you saw me grab the cracked pot there. So now we have four cracked pots. Make sure you grab all these cave mosques. Use those to make some um, anti-poison chewing gum. <laughs> What's what I call it? Strong attack on this guy. Some uh, neutralizing boluses, that's what they called. I call them anti-poison chewing gum. Cures you of poison. So grab all those cave moss. And that's it. Our work here is done. Alright, now we're going to Limgrave Tunnels and start collecting smithing stones to upgrade the Great Axe our most powerful weapon. On the way to Limgrave Tunnels we're gonna grab some Trina's Lily. They're guarded by a giant crab. Trina's Lily you can use to make sleep pots. And sleep pots we can use on trolls or pretty much anything that's susceptible to sleep. Extremely useful. Here I got lucky with, with whacking those birds. Typically they take off before you can whack them but I got lucky there. Right, so do exactly what I did there, hop over the cliff and push to the north. Stick to the left side because you don't want to get out in the lake too much because like Yuri said, there's a dragon there and you, you are not ready for a dragon now. Just, just forget it, there's no way. Okay, so stick to the left side to avoid. And I want to take out this guy because I don't want my wolves to get distracted by him. A couple of jumps strong should finish him off. And the Trina's Lily are under this fallen runes right here. So I'm going to go around the corner here. And I'm going to warrior stance my swords. Throw out my wolves. Get up on this rock here. And throw a dagger to get the, the crab to come out. Roll away and let the wolves engage. Now typically what you should do is wait until the crab has his back turned to you. But I kind of rushed you here. So I went up and I thought I could take him but nope and he grabbed me. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Really munched away. That's it. Fortunately the wolves saved my ass. So I took some heat there. Like some major heat. Okay, now we're gonna go to get what the crab was guarding. Three Trinus Lily. These are extremely valuable. They're unique, unique spawns. Like that, that they won't respawn. That's it. You get them that one time, and that's it. They won't respawn. 
Okay, stick to the left side here again. There's another giant crab here I typically, typically take down for an extra 300 runes, but I'm going to skip it this time because um, I got whacked. I'm low on health and I don't trust myself to do that crab. And we're close to another side of grace. I just want to take a chance. So we're going to go in here to the Limgrave Tunnels. Bring up your torch. Going to jump off into a secret tunnel on the left side on the way down and get a golden rune 4, I believe. Here we go, golden rune 4. That's worth 1,200 runes. And then you're going to have to platform your way down to the bottom on the left side here. Do a running jump to get onto this ledge and then just drop down here. Drop down here. And let's gobble up all our runes and we should be able to level up again. Discover Limgrave Tunnels. And of course, rest. Okay, so we can level up strength again. Strength up to 22. And I want to talk to Melina. Me? I'm searching for my purpose, given to me by my mother inside the earth tree long ago. For the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless, there is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the finger maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. Okay, that's just a personal preference of mine. I love listening to Mel Melina or Melina. So yeah, I just like played her dialogue. All right, so the torch actually does strike damage, and all these miners they're resistant to slash, pierce, or otherwise any kind of sword damage. I, I've seen so many times people trying to take down the miners using swords, and it's it's crazy. They're resistant to all that kind of damage, but the torch actually does strike damage, and with our strength at the current level, we should be able to one shot these guys if you do a charge attack and you get up behind them. Alright, so we're going to wipe out all these miners, get up behind them in sneak mode, and lock on, do a charge attack. Should be one shot. Occasionally, um, you don't get a one shot. I don't know why that is. Okay, so just follow my route here. Hook around to the right, find this guy here. Like that time. I don't know why that failed. And make sure you grab the smithing stones that they're working on. Up here, up the ramp. Target. S charge attack. Target. Charge attack. Once again, I don't know why that failed. It rarely fails. But sometimes it does. Okay, there's a, there was a miner sleeping behind this debris here. So usually I just shoot an arrow to, to like get rid of the uh, debris. Because I want to be able to take him down quickly because there's three rats in a cave down the tunnel on the right side of the screen there. So you wanna... You never be able to, you can never one-shot this guy. And then quickly back off a bit, target the rats and throw your fire pots. And sorry, I forgot to mention that I made some fire pots at the beginning there. That's why I made them. Otherwise, you're dealing with three rats coming at you and it's a hell of a fight if you're in melee. So easy to just wipe them all out with a couple of fire pots. All right, and here's another smithing stone. And hope everybody's got their short bow with some firebone arrows because we're going to have a lot of fun later on. And you can take the elevator all the way down. Down at the bottom is one, two, two miners and two dogs. And you may have noticed I made some holy water pots as well. And I just switched to my broadsword. This is important. Broadsword and the shield. And it's switching to the holy water pot because you can kill these this dog in the shack here instantly. Go about halfway up the stairs, target him, throw a holy water pot, instant kill. So don't waste a fire pot on him. Use the holy water pot instead. Now, there's a miner and a dog right there. It's really hard to ambush them. So typically I just run, get their attention and run all the way back to the elevator. 
and, then, and make sure you run over the pressure plate which will send the elevator, elevator up. Sometimes the dog falls into the hole. But if not, um, just do a guard counter on him on this side. Meanwhile, the miner never follows him all the way down. And then I approach the miner and typically I take him out with a fire pot, except the game ripped me off. For some reason, it let the fire pot land between his legs and it, it did no damage. So now I'm like, uh-oh. I didn't have a contingency plan. I didn't have a holy water pot ready to go. So I just tried to take him out with a torch and he took me down to within an inch of my life. He had to barely survive that fight. What I should have done was I should have backed off. I should have went all the way back to the elevator, loaded up a f uh, holy water pot, and that probably wouldn't one shot at him. But, um, well, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. This guy should be able to one shot with a charge attack. Boom, no problem. Anyways, them's the breaks. That's why I said that's why I'm calling this close to the edge. So I'm this deep into the run. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going, even though I've only got a cunt hair of health left. Pardon my French. <laughs> but I feel pretty confident because, uh, you know, all the strategies that follow, even the boss fight strategy, I feel pretty confident I can do them all without taking any damage. Now, I want everybody to hook up their short bow. Here, I'm making a batch of... Holy water pots in. Oh yeah, make sure you grab those five large glintstone scrap that are in the shack there. Those are very, very important. You can use those to take down the boss fight. Easy. Every single build can use those large five glintstone scrap to make short work of the, the stone digger troll boss fight. So make sure you grab those. Okay, so you can take the elevator up, take off, jump off the first stop here. And this is the boss tunnel. I'll call it the boss tunnel because it leads to the boss fight. Now, we have a miner dead ahead and we have two miners patrolling, one on the left and one on the right. This miner that's mining has an explosive fire barrel on top of his back there. So if you shoot that with a fire arrow, it will blow up and it has a huge area of effect. So what you could do is wait till the miner on the right it's going to destroy this debris here to give me a clear line of fire on him. Wait till the miner on the right patrols up. He patrols very slowly. And he's going to stop right before that other miner. As soon as he stops, fire an arrow into that miner that's mining. And it'll blow up. And it'll damage the other guy to within an inch of his life. Wait for it. Watch, watch. watch. Boom. Knocks him down. And then you can just finish him off with a couple of daggers. There we go. Easy peasy. That's how to take down both those miners with a simple fire arrow. And a couple of daggers. So you the exact same thing on this guy patrolling down. Wait till he gets right about here. Shoot this miner with a fire arrow. He blows up. Boom. And finish him off with a couple of daggers. And this guy, same thing. You finish him off with a single fire arrow. Blows up. And that's that. <laughs> a lot of fun, eh? Okay, we're going to switch over to the Great Axe for the boss fight. Make sure you grab all the goodies. And this guy gave up a pickaxe. That's huge. That's a random drop. But that is huge. And I'll explain why later. And get some lesser glintstone scrap there. And the smithing stone down here. And they're going to hook up my large glintstone scrap and the holy water pot in my other slot. Okay, so you want to slot your five large glintstone scrap. Make sure you get the smithing stone here slack. Add a boy, he's good slack. And you're going to whack your way through the debris on the left here. Because we're going to platform down on some ledges here and get a couple of uh, secrets. Down here, down here, and do a running jump. Not a sprinting jump, just a running jump here. And get a golden rune one and just jump down here and get a somber smithing stone. Somber smithing stone one. And that's that. Down at the bottom there is one final smithing stone one on the, uh, the right here. And then we're going to do the boss fight. 
with the boss fight we're going to release the hounds and then you're going to wait and see what he does if he rushes towards you you're going to rush in between his legs to the other side if he doesn't rush towards you lock on and throw all five large glintstone scrap at him and when you do that it'll break his poise and it'll go down the ground you can do a critical hit okay so you reach the hounds watch see what he does he engages with the hounds and now launch all five large glintstone scrap right away all five and watch fifth one's gonna break his stance down he goes and go up do a critical hit i missed the critical hit there we got it that time and finished him off easiest way to take down the stone digger troll works every time regardless of your build regardless of your class those far five large glintstone scrap will always break a stance bring him down you can do go up and do a critical hit with your best melee weapon and if it doesn't finish him off with a critical hit that's what the the holy water pot is for all right so or you could just do a strong attack or a charge attack right afterwards and that's that all right so we have money to level up and we're done here <laughs> thanks a lot for watching and if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative you know what to do give me a thumbs up subscribe post a comment and i'll see you next time for some no horse challenge hey guys real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on youtube for a complete lowdown on the youtube video game walkthrough scene check out my patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly major slack to help keep real walkthroughs alive on youtube you can donate as little as one dollar that's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, all right? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.